Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today, let's talk about the reach of the federal courts, the district courts, and the federal circuit courts of appeal. I'll have more on that in just a moment. So one of the things that I think most people don't realize um, with the exception of certain district courts who have uh, implemented what are effectively nationwide injunctions, which I don't believe they actually have the authority to do, uh, for the most part, a district court, a federal district court's order is restricted to the state where uh, the, the court is located. So, for example, when a court in Texas rules that um, a, a bump stock ban uh, is, uh, which I may have to explain that, a bump stock is a device that's used with firearms. I don't need to go into it any further than that because this, this is really more about the reach of the federal courts than it is about that particular part. But basically when it says, hey, the, the ATF's rule is constitutional, that applies in that district and it is persuasive for other courts to rely on but it only applies in the, in the state where that court sits. Now, when it gets appealed up to the Fifth Circuit, which is Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, those are the states that are in the Fifth Circuit, and the Fifth Circuit comes down and says, no, the, the ATF's ban on this device is not constitutional. Well, that only applies in Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. And in most cases, if the U.S. government, in this case, wants to appeal it to the Supreme Court, as they are likely to do, then what they can do is they can ask for a stay pending an application for certiorari. And the stay would then go into effect until the Supreme Court had time to consider whether that was a good rule of law or a bad rule of law. Now, interestingly enough, the Fifth Circuit is alone in its determination that this uh, particular ATF regulation is unconstitutional. Several other circuits have upheld it, like, for example, the Tenth Circuit, which is out of Denver uh, and controls Colorado and Kansas and Oklahoma. So the Tenth Circuit has reached a different conclusion than the Fifth Circuit. So there is what we call a split in the circuits. And a split in the circuits is one of those things that can often lead to the Supreme Court deciding to take up the issue and decide it. One of the things that the courts but one of, the, one of the great benefits of having multiple circuit courts of appeal is that multiple issues get brought up to those courts in different ways and with different facts, and as a result, different rulings get made. And the facts in the cases are almost always different. The plaintiffs and the, and the defendants are always different, and there are no two cases that are exactly on the same footing. And as a result of that, what you get is sort of a mishmash of rules between different areas. Now, when it comes to uh, these devices, they are clearly unlawful, and the ATF has criminalized their possession uh, in these other circuits, but it's no longer criminalized in the Fifth Circuit until... The Supreme Court takes that up. That's the way it's going to be. So if you are in the Fifth Circuit, for example, and you have one of those devices and you drove to Oklahoma and got stopped, you'd be charged with a felony. That is a, that is a bug in the system in some respects, but that is the way the system is designed to operate. So you have this split in the circuits and now one, either the government or the plaintiff in one of these other cases will take it up to the United States Supreme Court and ask, hey, what does the ATF have authority to do? 
And then because the issue has, uh, and the, the wording that they use in their opinions is that it has percolated up. Um, it has percolated up through the various district courts and circuit courts to the United States Supreme Court. And because it has all these different factual scenarios, the Supreme Court, who is in charge of, of reaching decisions for the entire country, now has the benefit of the thinking of all of these different district judges and all of these different circuit court judges. And the Supreme Court can use that uh, different, all those different cases to help formulate a better rule at the end of the day. And that is exactly how our federal system is designed to work and does work. It can be maddening if you have something that it only applies in three states, but that is pretty much the way the system was designed to work. Now, it is well known that some circuits, like the Fifth Circuit, are very conservative, and some circuits, like the Ninth Circuit, are very liberal. And as a result of that, there tends to be a lot of friction between rulings in those circuits. And just when, when it's just those two circuits that are at odds, a lot of times the Supreme Court won't take those cases until it comes up through one of the additional circuit courts, simply because they don't want the issue framed by the two largest states, California in the Ninth Circuit and Texas in the Fifth Circuit. And yes, I realize Alaska is the biggest state in the Union, but in terms of the lower 48, those two. I hope that gives you some perspective on how the federal system works and where the rulings apply. Now, again, um, many of you may recall in uh, 2017, the uh, federal court in Hawaii issued a nationwide injunction blocking one of President Trump's rules. And there was a lot of concern then that you had one court in Hawaii making rules for the rest of the country. And I think there was a little bit of pushback in Congress, and you don't tend to see that so much anymore. But I do think that with respect to the way the, the law should work, is injunctions should be limited to the circuit in which the courts sit and not go much beyond that because a, a, a rule that is put in place in the Ninth Circuit thereby extends to the entire country. And I think that's improper because the rest of the, of the country has circuit courts of its own, circuit courts of appeal of its own, and ought to be able to make those decisions for itself. But that's just my opinion. I'd be interested in your opinion, uh, particularly about uh, how uh, the federal government goes about making rules and that sort of thing. Thank you again for watching and uh, have a glorious day. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.